Welcome to part 2 of my marathon of one of the best Korean dramas, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, and we'll go right off into the characters. The supporting cast were amazing, and I think we should start with the one who is most likely to get into a rage if we left her out, Nam Yuri, who is one of everyone's favorite characters. She was madly in love with Gangte, and it made her one of the most unlikely characters I've ever seen. But later on, with the support of her mother and alcohol, she snapped out of it and let go and start one of my favorite relationships in the series. Having been raised by her mother alone and bullied as a child, she developed a very strong outer shell. It meant that she never really went for her dreams until the very last moment. Speaking of favorite relationship, Lee Sung in the eccentric owner of a publishing house that has the misfortune of hosting Ko as their main writer. He was usually comic relief but also just a representation of normal life, things breaking apart and you do everything in your part to put them back together. <laughs> Yo Song Jae finally shouted at her boss. She's an amazing character and I have to say as a person she has such a unique face really. Another amazing supporting character is Yuri's mom, or Sankti's fake real mom. She creates a balance in the narrative. When we see the cruelty, we somehow find refuge in her sweet little home and the food and the freedom. OG Wang, the head psychiatrist, the best way to describe this character is simply him smiling as all hell breaks loose. He's the moral compass of the show, sharing the message of the unconventional treatment. <laughs> but just like his patients, he ended up making the same mistakes, especially in regards to his son. <laughs> He's beaten down by all the chaos when he made a fatal error in hiring Ho's mother who ends up killing various patients. And he comes to the realization that he really doesn't know everything. So in this chaos, a much wiser psychiatrist tells him that it's okay to not be okay. Basically, you can't solve all the world's problems or your own. Not 
Jaiso is one of my favorite characters and an important character in the story. Throughout most of it, it seems his main goal is simply to be there for his friends. As comic relief, he's not really treated with seriousness by the rest of the cast. In fact, of all of them, he doesn't fulfill his romance and he doesn't seem that important to him. He's just there, but later on we learn that he's probably the most important character. <laughs> The next fascinating characters are the patients who help create powerful parallels that better share the main story and I think it would be better to tackle them in the next segment. Now our villain Park Hyung Ja or Ko's mother. Wow, I wasn't expecting this turn. In fact, it's probably the biggest surprise since I am your father. I am your father. It's not true. That's impossible. I did not see it coming, but there were clues sprinkled all over the place. I think it's a testament to the acting that she displayed because she acted so much like a good person that it was very hard for me to see her as anything else, which I think also fits with the story because it's such a surprise. Ko's mother infiltrated the psychiatrist's hospital to watch over her husband and secretly torment him before she killed him later on. It also gave her an opportunity to get closer to Ko. <laughs> Her main desire in life, it seemed, was to turn her daughter into herself, to make her daughter just as cruel and self-serving as she was. She went a step further to distance her daughter from friends and other people. And when someone dared suggest that there was something wrong with her precious princess, she killed them. But Park's plan of turning her daughter into herself backfired when she met these two brothers and slowly became kinder. So as a last attempt to turn her daughter back on the path that she had set her on, she confronts them all planning to be killed by Gangte as that will tear them away from each other. Things don't go as planned when the big brother jumps to the rescue. That was a shocking moment. <laughs> she ends up in jail and her daughter comes to visit, confirming that she has grown past her childhood. How well, not by forgetting, but by painting over with better memories. <sighs> Sangte is probably the most important character of the whole series, enough to say that if he wasn't there, there wouldn't be a series. And I have to say, this actor, Choi Hee Jin, deserves an award for his portrayal of autism. It is not easy to act this way, and every single scene he's in, he is perfectly in character. His mannerism, stutters, the way he looks away shyly, all these are traits that make a very convincing portrayal of autism. <laughs> And he 
this story starts right off at the beginning where we see here that he's scared of butterflies we later learn why he has such a fear and it's because he saw his mother getting killed by a woman with a pendant of a butterfly and it's haunted him ever since and he has been on the run from the nightmares and the fears and well literal butterflies <laughs> His brother being his only safety and Jaiso being a bit of a nuisance, but a loved nuisance. Realizing that their lives would always be lead on the run, his main goal is getting enough money to buy a caravan so they would always be on the move, not afraid of butterflies. Later on, he's taught that the symbol is more about healing and psych, not destruction. And he finally manages to draw a butterfly. But the worst thing that could ever happen to him at this moment is his brother falling in love with his best friend. Sangte sees their romance as a threat to his safety and in the beginning he's completely against it, feeling isolated to the point that he accuses his brother of plotting to kill him. Which if you think about it from the point of view of an autistic person, then this distance, this isolation is like death. But one of the most important desires he has is taking care of his brother, like a big brother. And if it would mean adopting another loud child, he slowly learns to add more into his family. Ko and Sangte hit it off more so when it's clear that they understand each other, they understand the power of certain stories. And Ko, unlike Gangte, isn't afraid to loudly correct mistakes and stand her ground. Hey. Mom, he adopts his family becomes a big brother an illustrator even and starts chasing his dreams his is probably the most powerful story Ko Moon Young hasn't had the best of childhoods. She grew up under the thumb of her abusive mother who fed her various paranoia and feelings of separation. It made her cold and distant from everyone in school until Yuri, who was being bullied at the time, sought refuge with Ko. It was the first time she had a friend at all. It reminds me of the story at the beginning of the series. 
But just like in that case, Yuri turns away and makes more friends, something Ko couldn't do. Ko uses her mother's tactics, therefore, to gain back her friend by harassing Yuri's friends. She hopes that she will bring Yuri back, but instead it makes Yuri more of an outcast and even more scared of Ko. Later on, she sees two boys playing on ice and then makes the decision to help one of them from dying. Chuka. One day, everything becomes much, much worse when she witnesses her father killing her mother and she follows secretly as he hides the body. I believe the mystery is that she's the one who saves her mother from death. How? I'm still not sure, but her mother must not have died and went on to have plastic surgery. She was so distant, in fact, from her father that she wasn't able to make it to his deathbed, but instead remembered a very touching moment when he was kind to her and read her a story, which prompted her to want to become a child story writer. <laughs> But Ko leaves all of this behind, moving to Seoul and becomes a children's story writer. Meeting the brothers, falling in love, help her to slowly forget her horrible past and find love. Along the way, she helps so many other characters break their leash. During this time, Gangte calls her an empty can, which was really, really sad, I have to say. <laughs> then she gets choked by her dad. But finding a way to not let difficulty break you down is really important, whether it's through humor or finding a good friend. <laughs> Gante's whole life has been about running away until he met someone who would literally chase him to the ends of the world and back. A crazy lady screaming that she loves him for no other reason than he's cute. Which makes life hard if you think about it. At some point he realizes that he shouldn't be out there trying to be there for everyone but also for himself. A memory of his childhood where he was asked to take care of his brother resurfaces and in it we see he realizes that he was actually loved. Gante, what are you? And this is such a sad moment, I have to say, but the realization helps him break free finally. The other powerful lessons of the show is fairy tales. For now, though, excuse me as I grab a cup of coffee. My voice sounds really tired because it's really late. <laughs>